takes you by surprise. Times and seasons are in your hands. Times and seasons are in your hands. Yes, and you make all things beautiful in your time. Can we do it one more time? Say you see, you see the ending from beginning. Yeah, nothing takes you by surprise.
taken me to a place of rest. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 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 Shall we rise to our feet? Let's rise to our feet to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for a day like this in which you have determined to reposition us for good. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of your son Jesus. Thank you for the great salvation which he purchased for us with his precious blood. Thank you for your love and kindness. Your faithfulness in keeping your promise. We are so, so grateful to you. Please receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift of your servant to this generation. Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And his wife. Thank you for blessing this generation with such a gift. Thank you because you did not allow him to be aborted when he was in, in his mother's womb. Thank you because even though his being conceived was not celebrated, but finally when he was born, he was celebrated. Thank you for not allowing the devil to kill him before he came to know this salvation. Thank you for those you used to position him to teach him and to raise him to become the general overseer. Thank you for all the storms he has gone through and thank you for preserving him. Thank you for making him a blessing to us and to our generation. Thank you because we have something through your servants that we can say God has been good to Africa. We thank you. We thank you. And Father, I say thank you also for answering his prayer over us. His faithfulness in consistently praying for us. We in turn stand today leading these millions of people to pray for your servants and for his wife. Let their joy overflow. Let your grace and the anointing overflow in their lives. Reposition them, Lord, to fulfill the great destiny. Lord, I pray for myself. And I pray for every other person under the sound of my voice. Oh God of destiny, tonight, do what only you can do. Reposition me, oh Lord, and reposition each one of your children as you reposition Joseph to the place of his crown. And at the end of this meeting, let there be indeed an overflow and a repositioning. So that by this time next year, when we look back, we shall say indeed, the Lord has been good to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Talk to one or two people and say, get ready for overflow, get ready for overflow. Please be seated and go. To reposition is to change where you are presently standing. I have been asked to bring the word to you. Overflowing blessings.
Which means the intention of heaven is to give somebody here an overflow of blessing. And if you are that person, let me hear you shout a thunderous hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yourself, I am set for the overflow. What is overflow? It is excess, surplus, that runs over the gauge or the limit that you have set. And if you have an overflow tonight as a, as a millionaire, you want to overflow. If you are going to have an overflow tonight as a thousand years, you want to overflow into me. If you are going to have overflow today as an anointed servant of God, you want to have an overflow in anointing to do unusual, exceeding something much more than has been done. So for you to overflow, there must be a measure by which we shall determine that there is an overflow. The size of the measure you present to God in your faith and expectation today is what you are going to have overflow on. So I want to encourage you and encourage myself. Enlarge your cup. Enlarge your vessel. So that the overflow will be exceeding. So you make a demand. Which area do you want an overflow of blessing? Financially. Health wise. Overflow of blessing. In wisdom. In ministry. In growth. In enlargement. The good news is this. God has already promised a limitless overflow. When he told us in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 14. Every goodness you can think of is listed there. How much of it you draw determine, depends on your faith. So tonight be intentional. Be intentional because there will be an overflow. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13. And Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, we are brought into the common of Israel. And in verse 19, we are made fellow citizens with them. But you can only be a partaker of that overflow if you have come into Christ. One thing I have discovered which God gave to Israel is spirit of excellence. And I'm believing God tonight that somebody in the congregation along with myself will receive an overflowing spirit of excellence. If you are the person receiving along with me, let me hear you shout Amen Amen Men and a man. What led to overflow for Solomon? He asked God for <laughs> wisdom when he went for thanksgiving and exceeding thanksgiving. Please let me just say whenever you have opportunity to give an offering or to do thanksgiving. It is opportunity to provoke an overflow. If a millionaire gives offering like a civil servant, the harvest that will come will be a civil servant's harvest. Tonight, when you will begin to give and you want to overflow, give in a capacity that can provoke a relative overflow for you. No millionaire should give an offering like a civil servant. And anybody who wants to overflow into billions, you can't afford to give care. Your seed determines the harvest that will come. And tonight, you must be intentional if you want an overflow. If you want an overflow, can I see you wave your hand? Then say it clear. I will be intentional in my giving and there shall be overflow Solomon in 1st Kings chapter 3 from verse 10 to 14 was in
intentional in his giving from verse 1 to 14. He took a thousand sacrifices. He did not stop there. He thanked God. And God said, what do you He asked for wisdom. And God gave him God gave him excess wisdom. And I'm believing God for myself and for somebody under the sound of my voice. That tonight I will receive an overflow of wisdom. I don't know what you are saying. Well, you better say for yourself. Everybody for himself. I will receive an overflow of wisdom. Solomon enjoyed the abundance of wealth and riches. More than anybody that lived before him. But he squandered it. In spite of the great wisdom that God gave him, he became foolish. What informed his foolishness? Deliberate disobedience to the word of God. In 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 3 and verse 9 to 10. 1 Kings 11, verse 1 to 3 verse 9, and verse 9 to 10. He ventured into the foolishness of marrying foreign women being unequally yoked building temples for idols and God was so angry that God said I will have destroyed you may God not be angry with us <laughs> Solomon died like a fool his name was not listed among the heroes of faith his glory was rubbished before he died because it was corrupted when he abandoned the fear of God which is the beginning and retention of power and wisdom. But today even if you have heard like Solomon my God will restore you. Let me hear another amen. You can have an overflow of joy. A lot of people, millionaires, billionaires, great men, great names, great scientists, great brains, live with frustration because they lack joy. Today, there will be a miracle joy released into your life. It is joy beyond explanation. Money and power without joy is depression. And most of our great men are living with depression. Hence, their quest to seek excitement from alcohol, from drugs, and from tranquilizers. Let me assure you tonight that if you will take the instruction from the Holy Word of God, you will have overflowing joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. Is there somebody who wants an overflowing joy? Psalm 16 verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand is joy forevermore. Hey, because you have expressed joy. You will have overflowing joy. But let me tell you the secret. Presence of God. Enter with thanksgiving. Sincere thanksgiving. Psalm 27 verse 6. Psalm 27 verse 6. But B says, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing. This. 11.
shining. And they committed the whole house to him. I pray for somebody here who is going through humiliation. Don't give up your righteousness. Because whether they like it or not, God will reposition you tonight and your star will shine. Say, I will shine. No matter how hard your enemies try to put you down, as long as you remain humble and abide in righteousness, you will be exalted. Those who oppress the righteous in their bitterness and envy may succeed for a while. But the Lord will reposition you tonight for greater glory, greater joy, and greater blessings. As long as you maintain the fear of God. In Genesis chapter 39, from verse 7 to 9, and verse 19 to 22. Genesis 39, 7 to 9, and verse 19 to 22. The woman of the house began to hide Joseph. For sexual indulgence. It was not just human beings that wanted Joseph destroyed. It was Satan who knew so of Israel. Joseph decided to ensnare him and sent a pastor's wife to seduce him. Joseph was offered free sex. But it was to rob him of his glorious crown that God had destined for him. Which his brothers could not take from him. The devil who used his brothers to trash him and send him into slavery. Again provoked the wife of Potiphar to see whether they could bring him into the deep pit of adultery and fornication. But thanks be to God. Joseph said, I fear God. I will not do this wickedness. So, it was when his master saw that he was not yielding, she blackmailed him. The righteousness of Joseph and his unyielding co commitment to the fear of God soon relocated Joseph to the prison, which will become his eventual bridge and crossover to the place of power and overflow. It was a dream of becoming a ruler that landed Joseph in slavery. It was the dream of becoming great that heightened the bitterness of his brothers that they said we will kill him and kill the dream. But it was another dream that bailed Joseph out. Joseph was in the prison. He did know that will be his connection, will be his connection to the place of glory. So Joseph in prison met another person who had a dream and when he interpreted that dream his passage to glory was established and in years there was another dream and through that dream Joseph came to the palace of Pharaoh don't give up your dream don't give in to satanic seduction don't give up your righteousness keep on holding on what if Joseph had accepted the offer of free sex, Joseph would have been finished. But thank God for Joseph. He endured. He restrained himself. Keep on dreaming. Never let go of your vision. It will come to pass. The expectation of the righteous shall never be cut short. Proverbs 23, 17 to 18. Proverbs 23, 17 to 18. Your expectation shall not be disappointed. In Genesis 41, 37 to 35, he met with Pharaoh. And after he interpreted his dream, Pharaoh did something unusual. He said, can we find anybody that has this kind of spirit superior of the gods and idols. He said, nobody. He said, you will take over the affair of this nation. God will reposition somebody tonight to go and take over the affair of a nation, of another nation. God will reposition you to take 
over your company as the CEO. God will reposition you to take over the crown in your village and in your city. God will reposition you to take over the most thriving business. And God will reposition you to take over on an unprecedented, un unexpected height. If you are the one, shout Amen. Joseph did not dream of it. He never saw it coming. It was a grand repositioning as the prime minister of Egypt. Though he was stripped of a coat of many colors, it was replaced with a linen robe of royalty. Though he was forcefully and wickedly removed from the favor of his father and the leadership of the twelve sons, but he was restored with favor of Pharaoh and appointed as the prime minister of an empire to which all Israel, his father, his mothers, everybody came to bow. Today I prophesy to your life in the name of Jesus, all those who have brought you down will come back to bow to you. When his brothers came to meet him in Egypt, this is what Joseph told Benjamin. Genesis 45, verse 12 to 13. He said, Benjamin, Genesis 45, 12 to 13. Your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks with you. Tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that you have seen. And you shall hurry and bring my father down. His upliftment was unprecedented in the history of Egypt. A total stranger was appointed prime minister because he was considered superior to the gods in wisdom. That must be the finger of God. That impossible height, the finger of God will take you there. It will take me there. It will take you there. If you are amen, is sure and loud, you will get there. Amen. The man who went to bed yesterday, a prisoner in a dignified prefect cell in the prison, today has gone to bed in a prime minister's mansion. I don't know whether you understand. He suddenly entered into a life of abundance, unusual overflow of wealth, riches, glory, honor, power, dominion, joy, peace, comfort, and luxury. It was an overflow of God's goodness. Oh God, that I may be repositioned for this unusual overflow tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that you may be repositioned. Lord, I do not just preach to these people. I receive your word coming from my mouth for myself. That tonight I shall be repositioned. I can't hear you. <laughs> Let me hear you. Tonight I shall be repositioned. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 to 21. Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 to 21. The Joseph that was trampled and trashed by the ten sons of Jacob became the provider, the protector, and the prince for the entire family of Jacob. In their bitterness and envy, they reduced him to a slave. But in his humility and sincerity, in his honesty and hard work, in his kind-heartedness and love, in his integrity and fear of God, he was given a divine repositioning. He was so lifted that those who, who sent him to slavery finally came to bow willfully, trembling before him. I decree today that all the enemies of the church very soon will come to bow to the church. Why must you give up the eternal for the transient? 
covetousness, sinful compromises, and fraud may bring you temporary pleasure as they brought for David. David can testify. The unclean sweet which he tasted in Bathsheba brought him the greatest shame and dishonor of his life. I pray that every believer who has been going after secret sin to get unclean pleasure, may God deliver you tonight. The same sex that Samson left Israel and traveled to the land of Philistines to get unclean was offered to Joseph beautifully packaged from a highly placed woman extremely beautiful very seductive that woman was his boss Joseph turned it down may God give you the grace to say no and no and no when Satan comes to steal your crown the offer of Potiphar's wife was an attempt to rob Joseph of the prime ministership that was waiting for him. What about those of us who sell our tomorrow? Esau sold his birthright. He ate it speedily. In a moment, he was gone. In years to come, he was looking for the future. The blessing of Abraham was about to be given. He couldn't get it. Jacob bought his future. It is the right of the firstborn to have double portion as a king and as a priest. But in his haste and refusal to control himself, oh, the sweet aroma of the porridge. He said, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Jacob said the bad right. In his haste, he gave it up. How long will you continue to eat your future? The day he came for the blessing, he wept. Tell the person by, by your side. How do you eat your future? How do you sell your future? For transient things. Young girl. The sex you are offering for money. And for promotion and for pleasure is your future. As long as that sex is outside marriage, you finish your future. The abortions, series of abortions, is your future. Maybe the child you aborted could have been a governor, a general like David, a governor like Ezekiah. Or a prophet like Elijah. You lost your future of being the mother of a king, the mother of a governor, the mother of a prophet. Is there any hope? When you go into fraud, you may make all the money now. But when they slam you to jail and they take all the money from you, you suddenly realize that it was your future you ate in a moment. Esau ate his future. Sold it. Believers in the Esau, Balaam and Samson company who sell their crowns of glory and eternal life for transient pleasures and fading glories of temporal pleasures in exchange for money or promotion. They indulge in abortion, destroy the womb and destroy future generals. And when time comes, for them to get the blessings, it's been sold out. But I have good news for you. I have good news for you. Jesus Christ said, St. John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The good news is that you can recover. You will recover. And you'll be repositioned for overflowing blessings, for greatness, and for glory. Can I get back what I have eaten? Can I get back the future that I have sold? Yes, on principle. Principle number one. 
You need humility. Pride goes to fall. And an haughty spirit before destruction. If you want to recover, you must be intentional. A man's pride will bring him low. Pride took Vashti out of the throne. But humility will reposition you. The wealthy prostitute of Jericho humbled herself in spite of her wealth. She begged and said, please save me. The Bible says God exhausts the humble. But he fights against the proud. He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. And in Luke 14, 11, Luke 14, 11, Jesus said, Anyone that exalts himself shall be brought low. So you have a choice. You have a choice. If Rahab could make a choice, you can make a choice. Heaven knows how many abortions Rahab committed. Heaven knows she sold her future. But one day she met with the people of the God of Israel. She said, can I join your God? They said, yes. But when they had joined Israel, she forsook adultery. She gave up prostitution. She accepted marriage. She became the mother of Boaz. Boaz became the father of Obed. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse became the father of David. Joshua gave specific instruction. He said, see to it. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 22 to 25. Bring that woman, Rahab, and her entire house. Out. She became the mother of Jesus Christ. Paul had squandered his future. He was persecuting the Christians and killing them. Paul was a religious hypocrite. Hypocrite. He was struggling with sin. See what he said in Romans chapter 7. From verse 15 to 22. Romans 7, 15 to 22. He said, the things I want to, I want to do, I'm not able to do. He said, the things I don't want to do, they are the ones I'm doing. I don't want to commit fornication, but I keep on falling. I don't want to gamble, but I keep on gambling. I don't want to do fraud again, but I keep on doing it. I come under slight pressure. I cannot endure. I cannot control myself. I just fall in. He said, who shall deliver me? In verse 22. Verse 25. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? That Paul humbled himself. When he met with Jesus, he put away his title. He said, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to follow you. You can be intentional tonight. Don't be too proud to be repositioned. Employ humility. Don't be too proud to seek help. Why must you continue to struggle with gambling? Struggling with fraud? Struggling with stealing? Struggling with fornication? When there is a deliverer, don't be too proud to accept forgiveness tonight. Don't be too proud to seek help. You want financial overflow? Humble yourself. Repent of not paying tithes. Stop following half-baked bishops. Who tell you that tithing cannot bring blessing? They know so much better than Moses. Except that they do not have 1% of the anointing of Moses. People who condemn Moses 
do not even do a quarter, a tenth of Moses' works. Who made Moses wise? The Bible said God gave Moses exceeding wisdom. Hey, Moses said pay tight. Jesus didn't say pay tight. Humble yourself. Since the day you have not been paying tight, don't you see your crisis? Those who are too dignified to obey God are too dignified to be repositioned. If your pride, if your tight is too much to be brought to the house of God, then your trouble will be too much to be presented to God. If I am too small to receive your tithes, listen to me, then I am too small to pray for you. When your troubles come, go to the man that is big enough to receive your tithe. Since your tithe is paid to your bank manager, let your bank manager cast out the devils. And when witches are pursuing you, go to the bank manager, 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 witches are coming. My son told somebody, he said, do you pay tight? He said, no. You want welfare from the church? God, if we give you money, the water will collect it before you get home because you are not a tighter. I ask you today, do you want to be repositioned? You want to be repositioned? Are you ready to humble yourself? Are you ready? Are you sure? Do you want to do what David did? Do you want to change your position? Let's bow our heads. Listen to my instructions. You have been struggling with sin. You are tired of struggling. You want Jesus to take you out. You belong to the company of Apostle Paul. You must come out here tonight. You have been living in sin. It has been your lifestyle. You have enjoyed it. You have made money by it. You want to be repositioned like Rahab. Then you will come out tonight. Whether you are like Paul that knows the word of God, that's a minister, but you are struggling with sin, you will come out. Whether you are like Rahab, who doesn't know God, and have been living his her life in sin, enjoying it, if you want to be repositioned, I'm going to count one to ten. You want an overflow tonight. Ask oh God that I may have the overflow you gave Joseph. At the sound of my voice, when I say begin to come now, you start running out. In the name of Jesus, every one of you that needs help tonight, that desire reposition, repositioning, begin to come out now. Before I finish counting to ten, start coming. One. And come quickly. Two. Just start coming. God will reposition you tonight. Thank you. Start coming and come quickly. You want an overflow. Start coming. Thank you. Thank you. Double up, double up, double up. And if you are coming from far, keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. You want an overflow? Keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. And run. And run. And run. Two. Three. And if you are in the other hall, start going towards the altar also. Please do. And if you are listening to me in any of the viewing centers, stand up and go towards the screen. And if you are listening to me in your house, then stand up in your house. Four. I see you coming from afar. Keep coming. Five. Thank 
thank you, thank you, thank you. Tonight, you are going home with an overflow. Six, stop struggling. You will not struggle with gambling again. You will not struggle with drugs again. You will not struggle with sexual indulgence. You will not struggle with failure again. You will not struggle. You will not struggle again. Because Jesus will reposition you. Six. Those of you who are able to run, please run. Rick, run and just keep coming. Seven. Thank you. I see you coming from all over. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. We are waiting for you. We cannot, we cannot close this session until you arrive here. You have to arrive here. Just keep coming. I know God has spoken to you. And you are going home with overflow tonight. Eight. I see those of you coming from my far right. Please keep coming. Don't think that the distance is too far. Here at the altar, there is deliverance. There is emancipation. There is freedom. There is repositioning. Those of you coming from my far left, keep on coming. Thank you. I see you running. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Brethren, I appreciate that you are coming from very far. I can see you as you are getting closer. I can see you as you are getting closer. Keep coming. Keep coming. Because your name must be written. Your name must be written. Don't go. Those of us who are clapping, let's clap for them as they are coming. Those of you who have arrived, begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Reposition me. You are the God who repositioned Rahab. Please reposition me. You are the one that helped Rahab. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Change my story. Start praying. Change my story, O oh Lord. You are the one that helped David. You are the one that helped Paul. Help me, O oh Lord. Keep coming. There is a fountain filled with blood. No, no, no. Rock of Ages, clear for me. Rock of Ages, clear for me. Keep coming. I still see you to my right. I see the way you are coming. From my right. Just keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. Just keep coming. Rock of Ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the world the blood from the river side of the ocean that don't save me from it's the Not in my hands I do. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked run to thee for dress. Keep coming. Helpless loot to thee for dress. Fall I to the fountain fly. Fall I to Watch me, Savior, or I die. Those of you who are out already, and those of you who are on the way, please say this prayer after me. Hey. 
Amen. Now listen. If your name is not written, it will not be taken to daddy for prayers. But once your name is written, then the prayers that daddy will begin to pray will begin to have effect on you. It is important for your names to be written. So those of you who are still coming, make sure you get here and get them to write your name. Now I'm going to pray. And you are going to say this prayer after me. My Lord and my God. Thank you for calling me out to reposition me and to give me overflowing blessing. I am sorry. I cannot help myself. I have struggled and struggled. I need your help. You are the God that helped Rahab, the prostitute of Jacob, the, the prostitute of Jericho. You helped Rahab, the prostitute of Jericho. And you did not allow her to go to hell. You blessed her with overflowing blessing. And she became the mother of Jesus. Help me, O oh Lord. Restore every blessing that I have lost. Everything Satan stole from me. Restore it today. I accept Jesus Christ. To be my savior and my deliverer, my captain and my redeemer. I believe Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. He suffered and died for my sin that he may redeem me. Lord Jesus, I accept your price. The offer you made for me to be forgiven. Thank you for dying for me that I may have your life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I also receive your life. I receive forgiveness for all my sins. Deliver me from my struggles. I should deliver Paul. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Save me from all my sins. And wash me clean with your blood. Thank you for your faithfulness. As you have promised in your word. To forgive all those who come to you. And to cleanse them from unrighteousness. I receive forgiveness. And I receive cleansing. Thank you for forgiving me. From today, you will be my Lord and my master. Sin will not be my master anymore. In the name of Jesus. And for the rest of my life, I will follow you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Write my name in the book of life. And when you come, I will go with you. Or when I die, I shall be with you. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Place your hand on your head as I pray for you. God of repositioning and God of overflow. Please forgive all their sins. In the name of Jesus. I come right now. The power and yoke of sin over your life. Be destroyed now. I declare you free. 
your sins are forgiven. Receive eternal life. As you have confessed, the mercy of God overwhelms you. Enter a new beginning. Beginning of overflow. Overflow of wisdom. Overflow of righteousness. Overflow of victory. Overflow of dominion. Overflow of wealth and riches. Enter your overflow now. And Father, I pray for myself and for your children. As you gave Joseph an unprecedented, unexpected, unimagined overflow, give us tonight. Father, you made Joseph so high that those who sent him to Egypt were happy to be his servants. Lift your people so high tonight. Lord, and as you start the, re the repositioning, start with me. Start with your daughter. Start with your son. And start now. In Jesus' name. Please make sure they write your name. And it shall be well with you. Please, counselors, go ahead. Begin to attend to them. Collect the documents from them. Begin to fill. Quickly and do it. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.